from the Night Shift Crew Studios, coming from the D.C. metro area, this is The Statement Show, with your host, Zach Chahey, with Tech and the News, and Terry James with Sports, plus special guest, Ninja Joe. back zach yeah Long for a little hiatus. bit of a hiatus yes sir feeling um, real good we have uh our special guest ninja joe we're gonna talk uh some sports we're gonna talk some uh tech here we're just gonna get back into it so it may not be as long show as some of the new, new ones are gonna be but joe are you with us i am okay so joe is an aspiring law enforcement uh officer actually uh that's not the career he's in right now, but that's what he's aspiring to be. And we have some questions for him on, on the subject. But we're also going to talk sports, and hopefully Joe will end up being a regular on the show. Obviously, Ninja Joe is not his real name, but this is uh, what we're going to go with. It's what we came up with for him, whether he likes it or not. Thanks. So, <laughs> um, It's so cute and nice and cuddly. Isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jerks. <laughs> we're only so happy to provide so let's get into uh our, our little conversation here. we'll start off with the uh you guys are going to do some nfc uh east prediction so let's start with that i guess joe now i i, I know that you're from the uh the the metro dc area so uh i know the washington redskins are are definitely your number one squad is that correct absolutely <laughs> Absolutely, I'm not a soulless cowboy fan. Like most <laughs> folks are around here, <laughs> right? Right, wanna be. So, what what they've got this year? Obviously, they they signed Robert Griffin the third. Um, they signed Kirk Cousins. They or, or excuse me, they drafted those guys. Now, now me, may I, again, I'm I'm not. I mean, I, obviously, I'm from the area, but I am. I, I'm, I'm here to kind of tell a lot of people that I'm not, I'm not sipping the Kool-Aid like a lot of people. I, I still see a fourth place finish for the Redskins in NFC East. How do you feel about the Skins this year? Your, your fourth place prediction is a very fair prediction because even though everybody's crowning Mr. Griffin as the king of DC pretty much already, here's, here's just the straight up facts. You got the NFC East six games. Out of your 16 games, you have the AFC North, mm-hmm. which is Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Cincy, three playoff teams right there. Yes. And I mean, obviously Cleveland, but you never know. So hopefully there'll be a nice little rollover. Mm-hmm. The NFC South, which is, I mean, just has the Saints and the Falcons. Again, two playoff teams. <laughs> the, uh, the Panthers. Which, uh, had the rookie of the year last year who broke some of Peyton Manning's numbers, Cam Newton. No, no big deal there. Oh, but I believe we lost to them last year too. Um, and Tampa Bay. Yeah. And yeah, then for the heck of it, schedule. it's, oh, it's very tough. There's, there's no, there's nothing easy about it to start the week against the Saints. That's, that's tough. Even, even so. with the, even with New Orleans going through what they're going through, you still have to look at it as saying, Drew Brees, look, he's Drew Brees. He's going to do what he does. There's, there's no doubt about that. He's, he's, I mean, a, a lot of people say, okay, Sean Payton's this, Sean Payton's that. But in my opinion, I, I don't see as how they don't think that, that Drew Brees didn't run a majority of the calls himself. So I, I'm sorry for the Redskins rookie quarterback to go into New Orleans first game of the season. I, I, I don't see it. And then, then they have, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it's the Rams second game of the season on the road as well, and then turn around and play Cincinnati at home. That's a that's a pretty tough three game stretch there if you ask me. Yeah, it's the Redskins and the NFC East really have just one nasty schedule for this season. I mean, because the two other games the Skins have, like you said, is the the Rams and the Vikings. Right. So it's pretty much the NFC West and North. Mm-hmm. So it means the other three teams get the Packers, the Bears, the Lions, the Seahawks, 49ers, and the Cardinals. Correct. So, Correct. I mean, all, all the way across the board, it is just, it's going to be a tough season for the NFC East. Probably, my honest thought is whoever gets nine, ten wins is probably going to be your division winner. 
That that because, may be a fair assumption. Sure, sure. Now let me ask. Let I, me ask you just, this, Joe. Sure. With with Pierre Garcon, Josh Morgan coming along, uh, they're going to have Hankerson back. It's evident that they've they've upgraded the wide receiver. But what are you really feeling with Pierre Garcon? Do you think he's a legit number one, or did they overpay for a at best top tier number two wide receiver? They they went out and got the best they could, mm-hmm. without a question in my mind, because of the uh, the NFL arbitration stuff from the uncapped year and everything going on. Sure. So with those penalties that both them and the Cowboys have to pay, Pierre Garçon is essentially the best they could get. Mm-hmm. Is he an absolute legit number one? Probably not. No. But you know I what? Agree. He's if you give him enough of a supporting cast, yeah, I'm, yeah that, I guarantee you he'll get some opportunities to prove himself as a number one threat. Now, I see Josh Morgan nothing more than a possession receiver. I I just don't I don't think that that we're looking at some fantastic uh you know uh, reemergence of say like Art Monk. <laughs> you no, know I just I just don't see it. I mean you know Garcon should for all intents and purposes be their number one. But who we're failing to mention here is is Santana Moss. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, from all accounts that I've heard so far in OTAs, Santana Moss has been looking fantastic. I don't know if you've been hearing the same, but I've been hearing that. And they obviously have kept him around at least at the moment. So they must be figuring the same thing. Well absolutely because I mean he's apparently he's dropped Another 10, 15 pounds or something like that, which is important because he's getting older and he needs to really kind of take care of himself. So th- the fact that he's dropped that may be able to make him quicker so that he might get his step back. Because last year he struggled. I mean, ever, all the guys last year really struggled to get some serious separation. You know, now Moss, he's absolutely fast enough that once he gets a step or two on you, he's gone. That, right. That's still absolutely true, which is great. Because he's going to get opportunities like that. Will he be the number one? Possibly. You know, it, it'll really depend on what comes out of training camp. I right. imagine him going in as number one. I'm seeing their biggest weakness besides the offensive line that, you know, we seen last year when they started off, the offensive line was, was, was not bad, then started getting injuries and then well, there went everything. Obviously, uh, Robert Griffin the third is, is a major upgrade, uh, <laughs> Over sexy I mean, Rexy. Amazing. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come it's a, 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 I dare even want to say his name. So, my biggest question with these guys right now is the running back game. To me, the running back game. I, I, you know, they're 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 saying that that High Tower is going to be the starter. Uh, you you still have Hulu. Uh, who do you, who do you feel would give them the best chance of of winning and 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 at least, uh, you know, making a formable uh running game at this point all three of them evan royster roy halu and uh guys i mean yes high tower so three-headed monster year. that's 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 uh, where you're going no with question. it yeah There's absolutely yeah. no question about it you know and then they even drafted another another guy um can't remember his name off the top of my head right now but right. they drafted another guy in the later rounds so that he's going to be competing okay so we'll see because i mean royster's the big guy he's like 230 pounds. Hulu is like 215 ish, and High Tower somewhere in the middle. Okay. You know, so High Tower is kind of that um, hybrid model. That he's sure. a little bit of a bigger guy, but he's also pretty agile. Great Hulu's pass catcher. Just, yeah, Hulu is just ridiculous. Yes. I mean, he he was an awesome surprise out last year, and then Royster just puts his head down and runs people over. Sure. Which again was a great surprise to see out of a rookie. But then again, he came from Penn State. So you look at it and say, you know what? That's exactly what they do. That's what you're supposed to do is put your head down and run over somebody. I so, agree 100%. Absolutely. So, when, so I, when I look at the running game, I'm, I get excited because they got better last year as the season went on. And they had what? Like a game, a five game streak of over 100 yards rushing. But yeah, in, right. In, in, in the past decade. Whenever the skins have gone over a hundred yards rushing, typically they win the game. So okay, is, I, I, I want to ask a question team. here. I'm not the biggest NFL person here. My favorite team's 49ers, but I want to ask you: 
typical Redskins question since we're in the area here. Are they going to the playoffs or are they going to the Super Bowl? Do you think they're going to the playoffs? No. You don't even think they're going to get to the playoffs? I'm I'm predicting right now no better than six and ten, maybe 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 seven and nine. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna come out on the show right now and say six and ten this year. I will not put a record out there because I have <laughs> no idea. I'm not gonna take that jump. So because... Ninja Joe has no faith in his team. <laughs> I'm not saying I have no faith, but there's a lot of obstacles they have to overcome. All right, so um, are you willing again, to put yourself out there, or what do you think? Do you think they'll at least get to the playoffs? It's that That's a hard call to make because guess what? Your division, I mean, forget the fact that you have the super, returning Super Bowl champions. Forget that fact. You also have Philadelphia, who's extremely explosive, extremely explosive, that quite honestly could be – a team, if they put it together, that could rival the greatest show on turf. Mm-hmm. Honestly, because they, they have that type of explos- explosiveness in their arsenal. But who knows? And then the Cowboys are always the Cowboys. Everybody always thinks they're going back to the Super Bowl. Yeah, well, everybody's really just thinking about the Redskins. It all really depends on where you live, in my opinion. But Well, well I'm, honestly, I'm glad, I'm glad you, you mentioned the Cowboys the Red- there. Well, yeah, I'm going to say, you hear the Redskins stuff are pretty much only in – DC. So, whoo! But okay, Cowboys. <laughs> right, Cowboys. right, right, right. Well, we. I'm glad you mentioned the Cowboys here. <laughs> so, so uh, what we got? Uh, obviously, they they went out and, and addressed their secondary, uh, picking up Claiborne, uh, Morse Claiborne. Um, that's huge for those guys. We all know that their Achilles heel last year was was certainly the secondary. Mm-hmm. Mm, what I'm looking at right now is. Although, uh, to me, overall, uh, draft grade, maybe a C minus, somewhere in the C, C minus. Uh, certainly they picked up Claiborne, but can Tony Romo stay healthy? And if he does, do they make the playoffs this year? You know, when I look at it, when I look at our, the NFC's East schedule, I really only think one NFC East team is going to make it. Right. Especially when you have the Packers, the Falcons, the Saints, mm-hmm. the the Lions, the Bears, and then oh yeah, the NFC West, which right. would probably be the Niners, and then I would expect the Cardinals to challenge. Mm-hmm. So I, you've really got some quality teams there that have mm-hmm. a lot easier path than the NFC East. Right. I only see one team making it. But I again, agree. I agree. It, I it really. Who knows? I personally see the Cowboys finishing pretty much with, with an identical record of last year, about an eight and eight, uh, record. Granted, they went out, they, they signed, uh, Brandon Carr from the Chiefs. Um, they, they got a, another linebacker, Dan Connor. Uh, I, I suppose if you want to say that they, they, uh, bettered themselves in the, uh, backup quarterback with Kyle Wharton, if you will. Uh, but other than that, I, I don't know. This should be the year Des Bryant comes along they they let Laurent robinson go so their third wide receiver situation is a little bit iffy so to me i i'm not completely sold on romo i mean i know a lot of people are uh but i i I just don't see the cowboys making the playoffs and and i I think they're gonna have trouble uh like you were saying with with such a tough schedule i don't see them any better than eight and eight this year i'm sorry i I just don't i think they're gonna simplify things Mm -hmm. you know because that offensive line, unfortunately, last year pretty much got welcomed under fire. They had a lot of new kids on that line that just had to really learn quickly and had to learn in the game. Mm-hmm. So that that's tough. But here's the positive thing for them that you didn't mention yet. DeMarco Murray. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. guy just Amazing. killed it last year. He just right. came out of nowhere, stepped in there, and ran his tail off. Correct. So he's he's going to be the serious X factor for them this year because as Bryant, you know what? Yeah, he's supposed to have another breakout year. He's supposed to have another breakout year last year. Mm-hmm. You know, you can make that argument that hey, he didn't have a quarterback to get the ball to him. Okay, he still should have caught the balls that were at, thrown to right. him and made bigger plays when he had the opportunity to. If he is as good of a player as everybody bills him to be, yeah, and he, he has he, supporting class. 
he was That's fantastic in the first half of, of of a game, and then turn around in the second half and kind of be a little bit lazy assed on it. If you if you ever noticed that, it was just it was rough. I happened to have gotten a chance to go down to the Redskins Cowboys game, uh, the second game down in uh, in DC, uh, and and you know it was such a heartbreaker because there were so many games last year that the Redskins could have and should have won. And Des Bryant lit it up. Uh, Jason Witten lit it up. And, you know, you're sitting around as a Redskin fan going, you have got to be kidding me. The, the Cowboys are not this good, yet they seem to always turn it on when they need to. I just, I, I simply can't see them being any better than eight and eight this year. I'm sorry. I can't. Uh, we, we spent a little bit of time on that. Let's move on. Uh, the New York Giants. Uh, these guys have the, the toughest schedule this year within their division. Um, they obviously still have Justin Tuck, uh, Umanura. Uh, so, I mean, they, you know, big question, two big questions, actually. Hakeem Nix, Ahmad Bradshaw. Are they going to be, are they coming back this year? Are they, are they going to come back from their injuries? Obviously, Hakeem Nix has been sidelined with a foot injury, but is expected to be ready for week one. Do you think that A, Eli Manny can have as good of a year as he did last year. And B, can they get it done with Ahmad Bradshaw as their go-to back? With Bradshaw, absolutely. Manning, last year, I think he turned a new page in his career. Mm -hmm. You know, last year, he really put the team on his back and said, look, this is my team. If we're struggling, I got to put it on my back and carry us all the way down. And he did it a number of times last year. Last year, he finally, in, in, when I look at everything, he finally earned his number one draft pick slot mm-hmm. right there and showed everybody, yes, he's a man and he is what everybody's expected him to be finally. And honestly, after last year, I say he's a top five quarterback and I've never been a Manning fan. I've <laughs> right. always thought he was horrible. Correct. I always thought he was how, maybe how old is Manning? How old 15. is Manning right now? He's probably twenty nine, thirty, yeah. something like that. He yeah, still has time. So, um, where do where do we see this going? I mean, um, he just is. We're talking. The, he's the one who just got traded, correct? No, that was Peyton. No, no. That oh, was, that I'm was thinking the of the wrong brother. person. Then. Okay, right, that's the right. older brother. We're that's the older Eli, brother, not Peyton. All right. How's so, the old? How, how old is the other brother? Peyton's 38, 37. So what does yeah. he really have? <laughs> like a couple years? He's old as dirt. Yeah, he's got, <laughs> I would say probably another two, three years in him. At, at, you're talking about Peyton? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say another couple of years. As, as, as far as Eli goes, um, obviously, you know, he, he's won the Super Bowl. He, he's done it a couple times now. You know, it, it, you Plus. know, right, right. He, here is my, here's also another question for you. Victor Cruz. Lit it up last year, but some of the plays that he had, a little quirky, a little out of the ordinary. Do you think he? Do you think he comes back? Does it again this year? I'm sorry, what was that? Victor Cruz. Do you think he can come back again next this year and 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 do it all over? I mean, a lot of his plays were a little quirky last year. Uh, you know, can can he come back again and and coincide Hakeem Nix? Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, he he showed last year. Not only was he a player in the league, but he can be a superstar in the league. I mean, how many highlights can you honestly say and look back at and say, look, it was only supposed to be a 10 yard play and he turned it into a 70, 80 right. yard touchdown. Right. I mean, he destroyed it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely destroyed it. So I, again, he, he's going to be somebody that everybody's going to be really paying attention to closely this year. We'll see what happens. I think, you know, with the, the Giants normally having a pretty strong ground game and having a, I mean, a good enough quarterback to win two Super Bowls for you. I think he's going to be primed for another good year. I agree. Again, I agree. If I, if I had to pick right now the team that I would think that was going to win the NFC East, you got to go Giants. You really do. Really? Really? You really See, do. I, I, I am actually on, on the opposite side of that and giving you about maybe a 10 and six giant record. Uh, and, and just falling short of making the playoffs, which brings me to who I think is going to make, obviously, the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, paper champions last year, but this year, 
Uh, obviously, um, they, they did pick up DeMarco Ryans, uh, re-signed Deshaun Jackson, locked up my man Shady McCoy to a five-year contract. You know, my, my goodness. Did, could, I mean, their, their, their draft with Fletcher Cox, come on. I mean, obviously losing Jason Peters this year is going to be big. That, that hurts. Um, Oh, I, yeah. I, I think the, obviously I believe the Eagles are going to go with Mike Vick. You can count what two, three, four games that he's going to be out this year. Can they keep it together in those three or four games that Mike Vick's going to miss? We all know he does it every single year. I'm a Falcons fan. So lucky enough for me, I got to see the, the wonderful Mike Vick as he was down in Atlanta, but I see, I just, Plain and simply, I'm, I'm trying to keep an open, open mind on it. Uh, but I, I honestly see these guys going 11 and five this year and being the division champs. Talk me out of it. 11 and five is really wishful thinking. Mm-hmm. Again, who, who could honestly say what the, they're going to do? Cause every, every week's different. Any given Sunday, you know, um, are, do they have the ability to do that? Absolutely. Cause like I said earlier, their explosiveness could rival the greatest show on turf. Mm-hmm. It really could because they are fast. Right. They are lightning fast. And that is speed kills. It always has. It always will. Deshaun Des- Jackson, Michael Vick, Malkin. Not Malkin. That's wrong sport. <laughs> McCoy. McCoy, well, yeah, you have McCoy as well. Mm-hmm. Then you have their other guy. Oh, uh, Jeremy Macklin. Sure. Sure. Jeremy Macklin. There you go. Right. So. And Brett Selleck. Ah, Selleck. Selleck frustrates me. He does. <sighs> they need to upgrade there. Cause I mean, yeah, he had an okay year last year. You know, he stepped up, but he still frustrates me. He, he's just like a big old goofy lost chicken with his head cut off guy when you see him running around at times. He just looks like he's lost. And it's just like, oof, I'm glad he's not on my team. But my question is this, and I know this is a huge if, capital I, capital F. If Mike Vick stays healthy all 16 games this year, which probably won't, but let's just say he does for the sake of this argument, honestly, do you really see anybody in the NFC East taking out the Eagles? If the Eagles have their game and execute their game, no. I, I agree. Don't. Yeah, but, I mean, but with that said, I don't, we know Michael Vick's not going to stay healthy because the way he <laughs> plays, it's simple. You can't stay that healthy that way. So you know he's not. So the question is, those two to four games you're saying, right? Do you honestly think those are going to be throw throwaway games that they can truly accept and not have hurt them? Who knows? I think think that's the biggest key. I'm with you. I'm with you totally. I'm just going to, I'm going to stand on it. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put my stamp on it right now and say the Eagles, go ahead, give me 11 and five division champs this year. And, uh, that's all I can say about it. That's wrapping up the NFC East. Zach, go go ahead, man. (laughs) Well, now that we've, uh, bored everybody who doesn't listen to sports, like myself, I think you're getting ready to hear me go out there for a minute, but uh, I was starting to fade. But anyway, uh, I thought we'd cover a little bit of background here on uh, Ninja Joe, and as we like to refer to him. We came up with the name Ninja Joe because uh, Joe has a background in martial arts. So I thought maybe we start by him giving us a little bit of uh, information or a little bit of background and how you got into martial arts and uh, what style you take. So maybe you want to give us a little bit of information on that. All right. Well, martial arts-wise, um, pretty much I do karate. So we can just leave it nice and simple with that. Um, my particular type of karate was, uh, comes out of Okinawa, Shoanro. Okay. So, and there's four different branches, essentially, that go into that. So, but I don't need to go through all that. So, for the most part, I do karate. I've been doing it now since 2007. So that's five years now. Okay. Uh, earned my, my black belt. Last 2010 in August, and just got my second degree back here in April of this year. So, and do you get into the whole competition uh, aspect? Now, we our our little dojo doesn't. 
Um, we, we are primarily much more focused on practical applications, self-defense, um, being able to better yourself. Uh, we don't mess with the, the competitions because once upon a time, my, my teacher did mess with that and he pretty much found that it was very political. And even though that some of the fighters that he would have that would be much more skilled wouldn't be winning those fights because the judges would be siding with their fighters or other fighters from bigger name dojos and things of that nature. So he just said, forget this. If we're going to do any competitions, we're going to go do it actually in Okinawa. So would you say he's teaching you basically, it's more of a how to handle yourself in the street when you really need it instead of fighting, training you to win competitions, which can be two different types of uh, martial arts. Exactly. All right. So in getting to what I was saying near the beginning of the show, we we know that you have uh, an interest in law enforcement, and that's kind of the area you're heading towards as far as a career. And obviously, the martial arts is really good as far as giving you a background and protecting yourself and, and being able to handle yourself. Uh, can you give us an idea uh, when you first got uh, interested in law enforcement? What what you were, uh, how old you were? Can you remember how old you were when you first got into it? Um, when I was younger, I don't remember the exact age, but there was a movie that came out named U.S. Marshals with just some kind of no-name actors, uh, Wesley Snipes and Tommy Lee Jones. Again, no-name guys. <laughs> I'm starting um, to feel old, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? I just <laughs> happened to watch that one day when I was a kid, and I thought it was the coolest thing how Tommy Lee Jones just was not giving up, and he was going to get Wesley Snipes. I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. So I always had an interest get his man. That. Okay. Yeah, I always had an interest from that that point. Um, just one day happened to talk with a family friend who is a canine officer and he said, here, why don't you do a ride along with me? And it, it was a life changing night. And that's really where I said, that's, there's nothing else in this world I would ever want to do. Well, that's where I'm going to, I'm going to kind of interject a little, I mean, um, coming from different area myself, uh, I lived in Pennsylvania and then I'm out in, right now I'm in, I'm in the DC metropolitan area. And, then, uh, it's kind of a little bit of a culture shock because in Pennsylvania, it's not the standard to get a ride along. If you go to your local police department, most of them don't do ride alongs. It's a, it's almost unheard of because it's a very, it's a, it's a liability issue. But when you come out here, uh, they'll let you, most departments out here, it's a common occurrence and you don't even have to be interested in becoming a police officer. You could just say, I want to know how the police department works. I want to know what you do. They make you exactly. fill out a little application and you go on a ride along. Uh, you can yeah, only do well, that one every six waiver. months. What's that? That application is a waiver pretty much saying if anything happens to you, uh, you knew what you were getting into and we as the police department are not held liable. It's okay. a waiver. So they cover this themselves legally. That makes sense. Okay. So uh, you said you – I myself have taken uh, multiple ride-alongs myself. And i got to admit, it's really – it's a very interesting uh, thing to do. If you ever get a chance and, and you have it available in your area, you should take part and, and, and see how your local law enforcement works. Uh, I can tell you that it's definitely not like watching cops. It is and it isn't. It takes them weeks to get the footage you see in a half hour sometimes. Being a cop is not always excitement. There's a lot of sitting around. Uh, there's probably more to it than most people uh, don't realize as far as a lot of mundane paperwork. Lots and lots of paperwork. Uh, so it's it's definitely not what everybody thinks it is. There is a lot of action, but there's also a lot of things you have to do, very procedural things you have to do. and uh, You can get in trouble if you don't follow them. So... Um, but anyway, getting back to you as far as, uh, your, your law enforcement endeavors, uh, can you give us a brief, uh, rundown? Uh, I want to be a police officer. What can I expect? Uh, I, I would have to go through. Okay. Well, again, first thing is every department is different. That's a very important thing to note because not everybody's going to have the exact same procedures, but for the most part, they're all follow this kind of a guideline where you have to take a written test to say I am competent to function within the police world. Okay. It's not an IQ test or anything, but it says I can function within a police environment. Basically you have some sort of analytical thinking. 
you can add, you know, two plus two, this kind of things, right? Well, yeah. You know, so, so you have a written test, you know, and there's all different types of tests out there that people do. Sometimes the departments have their own. So, but there you have those tests. The next thing is normally a physical agility test, uh, just to make sure that the person is physically fit. And can, you know, run after somebody and catch them and not have a heart attack in doing so. Okay. Okay. Obviously, I'm going to say this right now, uh, cut in a little bit, that in my experience and what I've seen, uh, <laughs> Terry can probably tell you, tell you, we've seen this too. Once you're in the police department, uh, it's pretty much a let yourself go kind of thing because I've seen some pretty, um, Fat asses. Just, yeah, <laughs> that's good putting a mile. I've seen some pretty heavy police officers, so it seems to me that most departments, it's once you've gotten in, you're in, and if you let yourself go, I'm sure they maybe say something to them, but it's almost as though there's no requirement to keep yourself in a fit type of shape. If you there's can, there's not. So um, there's not. I mean, some some departments give you an incentive, saying, hey, you know, if you guys come out and do a PT test and max out or score above this certain part will give you some money you know okay there's little things like that but i mean for the most part pretty much when you're in you're in and i mean we've talked about this before off offline where we've discussed one officer particularly for one department has his car reinforced <laughs> because he's so big yeah uh boy i would love to tell you who that what department that is, but we'll leave that out of it for yeah, now. Yeah, we'll, we'll just. I mean, say, I it's 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 obvious that there are officers who don't who don't keep themselves in shape. Um, and the typical testing process we're talking about a written test, physical agility test. We're talking about um, going through a background, extensive background check. We're talking about yep. going through a polygraph. Yeah. And then we're talking about an oral presentation where you sit in in front of other people, uh, police officers, but you also sit in front of civilians who run like the HR departments. So you're not just interviewing. It, it, it's where people would always say, oh, it's somebody they knew. It, I don't think it really works like that anymore because there's no one person who decides you're in except for the chief, really. But you have to get through all these different levels before you get to that point. So, there, yes, you do have to get through the different levels. Um, but politics is politics. Exactly. It's dirty. So you, you, if, if you're a legacy up, for example, up in New York City with four generations of officers, you're pretty much likely going to get through as long as you're not a knucklehead yourself and done something so stupid that you can't get in. Okay. Well, can you tell us, um, in your, in your uh, process to get into any of these police departments, um, how's the economy affected this job hunt? I mean, uh, we all know that the economy is not doing so hot. Oh, it's, and it's they're tough. cutting a lot of uh, a lot of uh, counties and municipalities. They're cutting their budget. How does that affect but, you? Well, it's simple. When you work for the government, the government's budgets and how they are doing financially is a huge factor and I'll, have you personally so, have you personally been cut out though as far as um a job have you not gotten a job and you would have gotten it otherwise uh had they specifically told you it's basically we just don't have the money you know i've i've gotten through the process completely with a couple of departments and just didn't make the numbers cut that has happened a couple of times and it's basically you know, because of money well i'm you can make that argument. You could. I mean, it, it's one of those things where if the government doesn't have enough money to fund everything, I, I mean, everybody wants there to be police officers walking the streets so everything can be safe. But you also have fire departments. You also have sanitation departments. You have everything you can possibly think of that the government has to fund. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that that be, that becomes hard. It's it's where where can we divvy this money so that essentially well, we can have no effect to normal living. But for the most part, police departments, they really kind of get what they get. And it's hard because they are really held victims to the budgets. Exactly. So when, when a commissioner or a mayor or even a governor says, hey, guess what? I really need you guys to make this cuts or something like that. It, it hurts. It's tough. Well, so, yeah, I mean, you, you go to a different state. 
you have areas like I, I personally know Pennsylvania. Uh, there was a time when I was interested in law enforcement myself. Uh, that's just not the track that I went. But I know that a lot of departments out there, it's not the norm for them to pay for your academy. Usually it's something called the Act 120, and they expect you to pay for it. They expect you to put yourself through it. And when you vote, when you put your, your on your application, what? You're supposed to put down that they, you know, they require you to have this before you fill out the application. Whereas the DC metropolitan area out here, um, they pay for it. Um, yeah. but so they have the added cost of the police academy as well as anything else as far as, I mean, out here they have take home cars. That's unheard of in Pennsylvania as well. Um, out here you take a car home, but out here they also consider you, you're on duty all the time. So if you're in that car, they expect you to act accordingly. Oh, but, yeah. uh, and you also have to be a resident within that jurisdiction. And, and, it, and it's a, it's know. a, it can be, uh, usually I think, what is it? A standard, somewhere around 20 miles, air miles, something in that range. Every department has a uh, kind of a flexibility to where, like there's, there's special certain units that will be able to take their, their vehicles with them even out of the jurisdiction area because they need to get in there when there's a, a need for like a canine officer or mm -hmm. you know the SWAT team or detectives. You know when they're needed, they have to go. So, so. what? What's uh? All right, Terry. You know you you kind of have a little uh, knowledge of this. What's the what's the salary ranges of in in the Pennsylvania area? I for, believe that the uh, well the 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 Pennsylvania State Police. I believe their upper forties, uh, low fifties. I believe be starting off now. If you're a standard. Uh, municipal or borough cop, it's, I, I would probably say low to mid thirties beginning, I would say. But like you said, uh, for the most part, you have to be really, really lucky to fill out an application or go through the civil service and they put you through the academy. Like you were saying, it's, it's, you can almost be guaranteed that if you, well, I don't want to say guaranteed, but it, it, it definitely helps your case. If you take your Act 120, which by the way, if you go full time, you can't have a full time job. You can't have a job at all. I mean, basically they say if you're going through a full time Act 120 school, you can't have a job. Now you can have a job if you're doing part time, but if you're going through a full time, uh, Act 120 school, you can forget the job. So who can really do that if you're saying if you're, 27, 28, 29, oh, sure. or even 30 years old, you know, I'm not, I don't, I don't need a job. Nobody's living with their parents. I it's, don't know. Well. It, it, partly that's kind of how I feel that it's a, uh, it's something you get into when you're either first married or you're, or you're single and you don't have anybody else relying on you because that's really the only time. That's why you yeah. see a lot of young people getting it's into It's a young man sport. That's for sure. Cause you, yeah. you really need, cause if you have a family already, it's a very hard thing to kind of just oh. jump into something where you're doing a total career switch. Right. Um, Joe, Joe, let me ask you a quick question. Sure. So uh, after you've gone through, like, like I know that you, 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 you fill out your application, you've, you've done the, you know, the obstacle course, you've did the poly, you've done the orals, you've done, you know, all, everything that you need to do there. After you're completely done, the psych test, all that kind of good stuff, I know you can be expecting a letter or a phone call. Normally, I believe it's a letter. Is that true? With, with that being said, though, what what is the percentage? You've gone through all this. I mean, they they've kind of weeded out everyone, and let's call it a a fairly good sized department. We won't say a small department that's only needing one or two officers. We're talking about a, a fairly good sized department that's that's looking to hire thirty, forty, fifty, sixty officers. What do you th what if you've gone through all that? Is your chances pretty high, or is it still one of those deals where it's like, okay? Oh well, don't know what to tell you. Or I mean, can they look at you and go, "Yeah, well, our next, our next um, uh, academy, or maybe uh, six months down the road, or a year down the road." What What's the normal? What's the norm for that? Okay, so normally most departments will brag that they will have X number of thousands of applicants mm -hmm. for a class of, like you said, only about twenty to thirty cadets. Okay. So pretty much they weed out everything probably to about a 10% success. Okay. Somewhere in that neighborhood. And that's just getting to the academy because, again, remember, once you're in there, it's their job to continue to weed that down because they need the individuals there that are going to represent the department and the community with the, the honor and the, the, 
the right behavior of everything and, mm-hmm. and not misplacing the citizen's trust. OK, it, sure. it's a privilege to be a police officer. Nobody has that right. You have to earn that. So that 10 percent that gets in there, you're going to have people that are going to quit because, oh, this is not what I expected to be. It's oh, it's too hard or they're going right. to fail out. Yeah, it's and then funny. you go I, to it, your FCO program, show. same thing. I saw a show called Rookies. Um, you can probably see it on Netflix. I believe it's available on Netflix. There's been a couple of those guys. They get through the whole process, and then like a week after they're on their own, they just hand everything in and, and don't want to do it anymore because it's just not what they thought it would be. I would imagine there's a lot of pressure, a lot of stress that goes along with this job. There's a high ratio of divorces, and there's uh, actually a suicide rate that's uh, – with this job or profession, along with the fire department and these types of jobs, is a very uh, high and stressful job. You you also have one more statistic that most people don't actually know about, but the average lifespan of a police officer after they retire, a full career, is only about five to seven years. Now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and I do believe I read an article about this. This has something to do with the fact that uh, – when you're a police officer, for years and years, you're going through this constant up and down of adrenaline rush. And mm-hmm. um, when you retire, your body actually, actually goes kind of through a withdrawal. You don't have that that rush that you got from going on the chase or going after a suspect. You Really, your body has been kind of drained down because you're always snapping too at a moment's notice. Now, imagine going through that for a good 20, 25 years and all of a sudden – just like that, you're done. Okay. Now, yeah, but it is it is important to remember that that's not every single night. Of course not. You know, of course you not. But you, you're, but you, it gets to a point where it's something where your body starts getting accustomed to it. That's where I'm. Yes. That's what I'm trying to say. Yes. Now, you know, obviously, you're, you know, you're not going to be going through a car chase every day. You're not going to be running after somebody every day. But it's more than any other person in the norm would be doing. It's you're being called to the to the situations. So it's adrenaline. And I, uh, there's something – basically I read an article where uh, a lot of retired police officers, it, it's – they have kind of a weakened system where they have a higher risk of heart attacks because of things of that nature. But you know, it, also as a police officer, if you start out young enough, a lot of these guys are retired in their 40s because you only need to put, what, 25 years in to get a retirement? Yeah, every department's a little bit different, but normally it's somewhere between 20, 25 or – you know, and, and then it depends on the – the retirement package, sometimes it pays better for you to stay in until you're 25 or a little bit longer. Yeah, it okay. just depends on the department. But yeah, normally it's about 20, 25 years would be like the average career of a police officer. One of the, uh, what, I mean, obviously we're going to, we're going to follow, we're going to try to stick with you and have you come back on the show and see how you're doing. And we want to hear the progress you're making on this. And since you've been through the process a few times and it's kind of a long, it's a very long drawn out process for people who don't know it takes quite a Always while. Months. Yeah, months just for certain parts of it, like a, a polygraph or application or an agility test. These are all months in between for de- certain departments. Uh, somebody getting into this whole thing, what was what, what's something uh, what's something that you would tell an aspiring police officer? Let's say somebody who's 20, 21 years old, has an associate's degree. What should they work on? Uh, what's something that you would what's the biggest thing you think they need to work on? Biggest and easiest thing you can work on at whatever age, and it's universal, is your physical fitness. That's okay. the easiest thing right off the bat. Okay. We're you know, talking not, push-ups, running. Push-ups, sit-ups, running, pull-ups. If you're not running, go ahead and start running. You know, I'm not saying go out and run 10 miles. You know, start running a little bit and start working your way up. Okay. You're going to run. Okay. You need to run. Um, that being said, let's just say the real quick and let's give a generalization mile and a half. Uh, how long do you have to do? How long for a typical police test? Uh, when do they expect you to have a mile and a half in? What's the, what's the time you need to score under a lot? A lot of departments are, are again, just different. They do it their own way. So around here, there's been times as low as 12 minutes and as high as, 16, 17 minutes for a mile and a half. A mile and a, okay. A mile and so, half. but so we're saying for the middle range, we're talking at probably at the very, the very least here, we're talking at least a 12 minute hit for a mile and at, a half. On average. Okay. On average, you can expect to see somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 minutes. Okay. That's, 
kind of the average minimum standard to get past the physical agility test. Now, what about, say, uh, push-ups? Uh, again, you're probably looking somewhere in the neighborhood of above 25, maybe 30 range. Mm-hmm. Sit-ups, relatively the same. More is uh, always for sit-ups. Okay. Um, you know, you'll have like a sit and reach for some flexibility. Maybe a, a vertical jump to test your leg strength. You know, they, there's all different types of exercises that different departments use. Some departments just do a, a actual agility course where it's a hey, accomplish these tasks in under a minute and a half. Go. Okay. So, and a lot of these, uh, some of these departments do like an agility course as well, don't, don't they? Uh, where you have yeah. to carry like a do a dummy drag. That, yes. So yeah, there's there's a handful of them that are around again in our DC metropolitan area that are doing that where it's you know do like a dummy drag for you know 20 feet and you go sprint up some stairs, jump over a fence, crawl under some tables. You know it's like an actual it's to simulate an actual pursuit. Okay, that's what it's supposed to be trying to simulate is the different obstacles that you may encounter. Okay, well we're. Uh... I don't want to stay on this topic too long here. I feel as we, we did uh, sports and, and the whole law enforcement thing here a little – took a little long. But what do you think, Terry? We hit a few of these uh, topics of news here that's going on through the week. Yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah, I uh, – to graze here the Zimmerman situation here. Uh, apparently, he just got out on a $1 million bond again. Uh, they revoked his $150,000 bond because they felt as though – they felt as though he wasn't uh, being totally – uh, honest about how much money he had. Apparently, donations to PayPal. Would he have two, three hundred thousand, something like that? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it was somewhere in that range. So, um, I guess after, I mean, I don't know. I, I saw the guys like chained up going to the court, and I feel like when you watch some of these other people, they don't chain people up like that. And, I mean, maybe I'm just that's how they do it in California. They had this guy chained. It, for the courtroom appearances. I know he looked like Hannibal Lecter coming in. Yeah, right? everything but the face mask on. So, <laughs> but apparently they granted him a $1 million bond. Now, I'm assuming he just has to come up with a percentage of that. So, there's a lot more to this story because when you first heard the story, um, it sounded like basically he just walked up and shot some guy behind the head. But now you're hearing things like where he got scratched, and he had a broken nose and a concussion. And he was uh, either showing photographs of him where he has scratches and blood all over his face. I mean, it looks like he's been tuned up. So uh, I'm wondering really what the whole story is. I, I guess we're going to see see more. There's not the court. The case hasn't even actually started yet, has it? Nope. So um, I mean, what's your take on it, Pepper? You think uh... honestly, the best way to for this to happen is just to let it be taken care of all throughout the court. You know, let it all happen in the courtroom. Let the jury decide, it, even if it gets that far, you know, because again, they have that uh, stand your ground law. That's you know, what I'm, that. Might, well, that's what I'm talking about. All right. They well. might, they might, ne- it might not even ever make it there because they might say, look, he has every right to stand his, his ground. So, you know, all right, Terry, well, he's taken, he's taken the, uh, let the court handle the system. What do you think? Absolutely. Uh, no, I, I, you know, to be completely honest with you, I think like everyone else, when it, when it first began, like, like you said, it was just one of those deals where it was like, oh my goodness, what is this? What, it, but as, as it's gone on more and more and drug out further and further and further, I agree that, that the courts definitely are going to need to handle it. The problem is, I, I, and I've even told you this probably for the last, the last two or three weeks. He's somehow going to get off on it in some stupid technicality yeah, I mean, of some sort. Let's look at it this way. First of all, the guy was only arrested because of public outcry. Right. Because it sounded like a racial thing. And then uh, as far as uh, as far as if he gets off, honestly, it's it's a hard one to say. I mean, really, because it's in the in the public opinion now. It seems like that's the way it's going. And I guess we can we all agree that. Had he listened to the police and stayed in the car and not approached the individual, that, that we wouldn't be talking about this right now. He wouldn't even have gone, gotten arrested. He, the whole situation would have been avoided had he just waited for the police to show up and handle the situation. But instead, he decided to get out and confront the individual. So this probably could have all been avoided had he just done what the police told him to on the, on the phone. 
Uh, yeah, oh, no I mean, I, I could agree with that. I could also agree with the fact that the Sanford Police Department did a, uh, a half-assed, uh, investigation. Obviously, you know, the, the, uh, the sheriff or whatever he is down there, he's decided he's done now. It's, it's just been a, a mess. And like I say, it, there's no doubt in my mind that some way, somehow, They'll figure out a way to get him off. Now, I'm, I'm not trying to play God because I have no idea. I'm not going to judge. I don't, I don't have any clue whether he did or didn't do it, et cetera, et cetera. I don't really know. It, just in my own goofy little world, I have a feeling that, you know, he's going to walk. Yeah. It seems that it's going that route. Um, honestly, I don't really know. I mean, I want to hear more facts because, you know, you kind of hear in the story from both ends and it seems like there was a witness now saying that there was a scuffle between the two of them and, it, and that he, uh, shot the guy in self-defense, obviously, is what he said initially, which is why he wasn't arrested, because he stood his ground. But I still, like I said, feel like had he not gotten out of the car and initially just listened to the dispatcher, this wouldn't be happening. So, But that's all do, behind us. Do you honestly think that there's ever going to be a fair trial here? I mean, this is a huge, huge case. Everyone, every, every goddamn juror in the world, whether or a potential juror, knows the information everything's that you know this is this is not 1965 anymore we have you know facebook we have twitter we have every single news media it, it, it's every piece of information is at their fingertips and there's no possible way that you're going to find uh, uh everyone on that juror that's going to say yep yep no, i have no idea what's going on I, i'm i'm completely unaware of what's going it's it's not even possible so, well, like unless I they said, sequester the jury, yeah, it's obviously that's not the way it's going to roll. It's, so it's going to be a mess. It's it, it's going to be a mess. It, it, you know, like I say, I I I feel bad for everyone involved. It's it's just a messy situation. Whether or not it's going to be, I, I you know, whether or not he's going to get off, and I don't know. Either way, I don't think it's going to be a fair trial, though. Yeah, that's true. Um, it's come to my attention that uh, Ninja Joe here bought himself a new car. He got himself a Passat, and I believe it's a diesel. Am I right? Yes, it is. And when you say Passat, it makes it sound so girly. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it's not pink? <laughs> no, but it's also not covered in uh, flowers. Yes, there you go. Like Mr. James's car is. Okay, yeah. My my car at this moment is covered in two things. One, bird shit. And two, uh, the side railing of, of the, uh, interstate when I, when I had an accident the other night. Those are the two things that it's covered in. Yeah. Woo! From these record hurt, from the record storm that we had last weekend, uh, which over three million people lost power. Um, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. I didn't either. We are, our power lines are underground. So I was one of the, we don't, we don't ever really lose power. We get these power twitches where we kind of lose it for 20, 30 seconds and everything comes back on. And uh, I'm crossing my fingers right now because, you know, sometimes when you you taunt fate, you know, these are when things happen. So but mm -hmm. for the most part, we haven't we don't really lose power. We just get twitches. Um, we've been pretty lucky. But, yeah, we had a major storm, which knocked everything out. And, and Terry, you had a little accident with your car. I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, it in actuality. Um, it, it could have been a lot worse. But, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm fine. Everybody involved. Well, actually, it was just myself that was involved, but there was, there was a, a girl that was in front of me, and she decided to slam on her brakes. Uh, and in all fairness, you know, there was, a, I guess, a piece of construction of equipment that had blown out in the middle of the interstate, and she slammed on her brakes. I had a tractor and trailer that was beside me, and, well, I figured that, the, you know, when I slammed on my brakes that, you know, I was going to have a little bit better shot than going over to the right-hand side and going under the 18-wheeler that was beside me. That, um, that works, yeah. I mean, yeah. I had, the wind was blowing so so bad. I drive a little Saturn when uh, that we that I used to go back and forth, and and uh, it just how happens. I was in the in the middle of this, right right in the cusp of it, and I don't mind telling you, you're nervous when you're driving snow because you know it's just kind of one of those situations where you always think it could get out of control, but you're a little nervous. But in this situation, it felt like we were in a hurricane, and I was a, a little on the scared side, and. I, I don't mind telling you, um, spoke a little to God. Uh, usually you find yourself only doing that when you're on the toilet. But at this point, uh, I, I was having a little bit of a 
I was I was there I was speaking uh, speaking uh, to him helping me get through this because it was uh it was a little bit on the terrifying side there for a little while. I was completely frightened. <laughs> yeah, I think we both evacuated our bowels. So um, <laughs> uh, Ninja, you didn't have to deal with that. No, no, because I was sleeping. You guys were driving. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you slept through the whole thing, huh? <laughs> yep. So getting back to the Passat, uh, this is a, a VW, correct? Yes, it is a Volkswagen. So it's a uh, 2012, nice, uh, nice, nice, nice vehicle. Won the Motor Trend Vehicle of the Year last year, first class, and everything. You know, the diesel is really the performer, performing part of it, where it's as built. If you're doing highway driving, you're going to get your 40 miles to the gallon or more. And my average commute is 40 miles to work, and then I have to put it to 40 again in to come back. So 80 miles round trip for me a day. I'm averaging about 44 miles to the gallon a mm. day, or 44 miles to the gallon routinely. When uh, it's been so hot now, I've been blowing the AC, it's dropped down to just 40 miles to the gallon. It's awesome. That sounds like it, hybrid territory. Now, what are the downfalls? I mean, diesel, we're, we're talking a higher price here at the gas station, correct? Yeah, you are. You're talking a little more. You know, you got to shop it because not every gas station has diesel, so you have to shop and make sure that you have kind of an idea where some stations are that would have diesel, which is, I mean, just do a little bit of homework, no big deal there. In general, you look into probably about a 20, 30, 40 cents increase over regular gas. But here's the trade off though. My Passat is just an 18 gallon tank. That's pretty average across the board, or maybe a little bit more. When you break it down, I get 700 cruising miles to a tank. I, I mean, when you have like a, a Ford Focus or a Fusion or a Cruise or a Fiesta, any of these other small compact cars that get to that 40 miles to the gallon as well, mm-hmm. they only have a capacity, a max capacity range of like 400 miles. Mm-hmm. And you have to refill up again. So I make the argument of my one fill up is one and a half to maybe even two times a fill up for a regular car. So in the long run, I'm still saving money, even though I'm paying more up front. Okay. You don't have to sell and me. Besides, I love the Volkswagen. Passat, a Passat's a, uh, a, a large vehicle. It's not a small little compact. It's a, it's, it's in the medium class, but it has like a large interior. I mean, Zach, you're six foot five. You've sat in the back. You were plenty comfortable. Oh, absolutely. I got a, it's and a beautiful I, looking car. I have no complaints. Uh, it sounds great. It used to be when you, when you heard those diesel vehicles, uh, they sounded like a Sherman tank. Yep. Um, this car's quiet. You wouldn't know it's diesel to look at it. M- you know, my only problem would be trying to remember not to pull up and put regular gas in it by mistake. But yeah, I mean, what other cars were you considering? Was this, what else did you look at? So, for me, again, my commute is a long commute. So I was looking for a vehicle that could get high mileage. A hybrid, I was not looking at because hybrids... They're, they're still kind of in their infancy. Around. Yeah, they're still well, kind of in their infancy, too. They're, they're also meant to be driven in the city. I mean, that's why you see their city mileage is much higher than their highway mileage. They're meant to be driven in the city. That That's what they're for. I mean, when you see people driving a Prius from, you know out where we are all the way into DC or into Baltimore or wherever you have to go, it, it's not really using that car properly. It'd be kind of trying to hammer a nail with a screwdriver. It, it just is not the right use of that car. You're not going to get the full use of the car out of it. So for me, I was never looking at a hybrid. It was really pretty much, well, I know that's what this diesel can do. What other options do I have that are 40 miles to the gallon, which were these compact cars. And I'm I'm a I'm a decent sized guy, you mm-hmm. know. Okay. And I sat in those things, and it was like glove fit. And I was just like, ugh, I don't like this. This isn't comfortable, you know, because you got I have to drive an hour to work and right. from work every single day. I need to have some room and be comfortable, and that's really where the the Passat just met all of my needs. It just because it gets a great great gas mileage. It has plenty of room. It's a safe car movement too. It's not like it's a, a, a underpowered diesel engine. I mean, it, it only has 190 
for horsepower, but the torque is really what saves this thing because it's a turbocharged engine, and the torque really gets you up to that speed to where it feels like, even though it's a four-cylinder, it's a six the entire time. Oh, absolutely. A lot of the new vehicles kind of have that four-cylinder but feel like you're in a six uh, thing power to them so i'm definitely not a car guy i don't even try to make it sound like that i am but uh, i have a ford fusion myself and i'm gonna tell you what i never thought buying a four cylinder would feel like we got a six but you obviously don't have a little get up in the beginning of the you know if you take off from a light but i mean it it's a very comfortable ride and then the cars have been retooled these days get better gas mileage and i mean it was either retool the cars or just keep getting outsold by the foreign vehicles but as you know, as far as I'm concerned, I think Ford is a good is a good vehicle nowadays. They kind of used to be the butt of a lot of people's jokes. I think they've really outdone themselves. You like the VWs and and Terry, uh, he has a VW. He loves the VWs as well. well. I have three VWs. He's, yeah, there you go, VWs if, uh, coming out his if, ass. So <laughs> if if Ford would have had an option for me that competed on the same level as this Passat was, there's no question in my mind I'd be Ford first. You know, yeah. I'm very proud to say that, but the fact of the matter is, for my needs, Volkswagen got it right, so that's where I went. I agree. Okay, well, we're we're definitely going to have you back on so you can give us an update on how you're doing on your chosen career path and maybe give us a few more pointers. Well, also, you know, we're, we're gonna we're we're looking at doing like another uh, separate show through the middle of the week. Maybe towards uh, the beginning of the football season here, that'll be more towards the fantasy football. So we won't have such long sports segments as we did on this one. Uh, me and Terry came off kind of a long hiatus here. But the show's coming back. We've got a website coming up, uh, which is going to be The Statement Show. It's going to be www.thestatementshow.com. We're going to have more guests. And so we're going to kind of retool the show a little bit to be a little more entertaining so we're just kind of shaking the web cobwebs out of our ears and we're, and we're getting things going again here. So we got a lot of new exciting things coming. We got some sponsors coming. So, uh, anything you want to add, Terry? It just felt good to be back. Yeah. And thank, thank you, Ninja, for joining us, man. Yeah. You were awesome. Exactly. So we appreciate wow. it. So from the Night Shift Crew Studios, this is the statement show. Thanks for joining us at the statement show. If you have any comments or concerns, or would like to be a guest on the show, email us at thestatementshow at gmail.com.